Good morning, everybody. This is Pastor and Prophetic Voice, uh, Randy G. Newman of Prophetic Fire and Word Ministries. And we're here with the word of the Lord on this morning again, on this third day, of uh, hearing what thus saith the Lord. And last night I slept wonderfully, slept great. I was listening to C.C. Winans, The Throne Room. And if you ever get a hand, chance, Get a hold of that CD. Listen to the lyrics. It will bring you into a place of worship. And I still feel the intensity of the anointing from last night. Slept well. Rested. And that's what God wants us to do. Really still rest in his presence. But as I sit here today, I, I come to share a story. Real life. Uh, what I've experienced. Not to bring up the past, not to bring up old hurts, old wounds, to bring up things to um, say I have the victory in my life. And back in 1979 to 1980, I was in transition of going from the fourth grade to the fifth grade. And at that time, my two teachers were Miss Mrs. Dorothea Brock. Uh, this is right before the women's live and women were working class citizens and she was a working school teacher and she loved her job. Uh, my prayers is that she's still alive. I miss her deeply. Um, and I went from her class to, excuse my reflection on the glasses again, uh, from that class to Miss Sharon Manganiello. I was in the regular class, Mrs. Dorothea Brock, and back then they would take you to your new teacher. And this is to show you how God's grace was sufficient for me. Uh, I noticed that I was going down the hallway, like about two or three doors down, because on the first floor was uh, Kindergarten, first grade, second and third. So I was upstairs on the second floor on the far left, the last room at the left side. Uh, Mrs. Brock was two doors down from Mrs. Manganello. They already had to do each other. Good, good workers, uh, real teachers. And she said, well, this is Mrs. Manganello. I just wanted you to meet her. And I knew then something was wrong. And this was a special ed teacher and I'm studying saying to myself I hope I'm not getting ready to be placed in special ed well in the fourth grade my grades had slipped very badly and this is not to discredit or disrespect anyone on any terms when your home is in disarray and I believe that all of us come from a house of dysfunction <clears throat> you're gonna have some problems with your grades. Because everything you see around you, always remember this, children are like sponges. We absorb everything. So as she was introducing me to her, I can kind of tell that's where I was going. So I received a letter that summer that you were going into special ed and your teacher will be Mrs. Miss Manganello. I was furious. I was mad with my mother. I was mad about everybody around me. But it was still an education. So quickly the anger left. And I went in there in September to that class and I stood in the frame of the door and she was like, come on in. And she introduced herself again. I was not thrilled. I was not happy. People were cracking jokes. <laughs> you know, I laugh now, 50 years old. That's still funny to me. And the older I get, the more, you know, God has a sense of humor. And um, that was <laughs> funny. I heard jokes like, um, he's lost in Los Angeles. Oh, well, you know, he always been a little special or he's retarded, 
I heard the remarks like that. Um, they were hurtful back then because I didn't know any better. But I, after a while, I became comfortable with that class setting. Those kids, all of us, became like a family. We all had a little <clears throat> a dysfunction. And you can tell some were different than others. Some was emotional. Now, this is, we're talking about EMR, Elementary Mental Retardation. And there's two other classes or sessions that deal with that. A resource Cluster, LA, Learning to Adjust, or LD, Learning Disability. And you can tell by some of the conversations that some of the kids were not slow. Some had a hard time writing. Some had a, uh, a hard time diagramming sentences. Some even had a hard time writing in cursive. Mines was following instructions to really catch up with other students. And in that setting, I caught on quicker. And the teacher took notice. Was special ed a curse or was it a blessing? It was a blessing. Because anytime God going, is going to use you, he's going to pull you out of the gutters. And I had to go into the gutters to be pulled out. So God knew what he was doing. I laugh now at that. that that's, that's funny to me. Some of the people became the best of friends. Some were, uh, I don't understand how do you fail special ed. No, you really got to be dense. If you spell, you, you're failing special ed, that's nothing but fourth and fifth grade work. I never understood that. I even seen people quit school in high school, not grammar school, in high school because they could not comprehend special ed material. That I never understood. Uh, long story short, when I say special ed was a blessing, we end up on two areas that blessed my heart and to this day it still blesses me. We end up performing in front of the whole school, a play called Just In Time, Save Nine. I was the narrator. I knew nothing about a stage presence. My teacher looked at me and said, we're gonna have Mr. Randy Newman narrate the play. And I'm looking at her like, huh? No, we're not doing no play now. She said, Mr. Newman, I'll call your mother and ask for her blessings. You know, Italian women are very strong. So my mother, when I get home, uh, your teacher asked you to do the play, you gonna do it? I said, yeah, because my mother and her had talked. So of course I had to obey those in authority. I narrated the play, we made one mistake in the play. And I told the, the class, go back to your places and do it again. They obeyed me, did the play, and we received a standing ovation. I was not afraid when I hit that stage. I narrated that play like I was a teacher. To God be the glory. And I liked what I felt when I hit that stage. Something went across me. I felt like a wind. Now the Bible says, behold the wind of God that blows. I like on the day of Pentecost. And my life began to change. We end up back on the stage again. We did a... a a musical selection called Free to Be You and Me by Miss Marlo Thomas. If you know Phil Donahue, uh, that's his wife. Uh, if you know about the St. Jude's uh, funding for children with cancer, she's the president. Her father was the president before her. We thank God for Miss Marlo Thomas. We did that and now we got another standing ovation. Now this is the, what got me to where I am now. Uh, Usually students in special ed don't receive any perfect attendance, merit, or honor rolls. I, I pay more attention to my classwork, reading, writing, math, and I love what I was doing. Cursive writing, I love cursive writing. And my teacher would tell me, uh, Mr. Newman, get up and do the whole cursive project on the board. And I would do it every week, every 10 weeks. And she loved the way I did it. She seen my potential. So when it came to grades, I always got or received between 80 or 85 or, or 90. And she loved that. Teachers like to see students uh, get good grades in their class, you know. And I remember she said, well, we're going to the auditorium. There's an award ceremony and some of you will be receiving awards. She wouldn't say our name. She surprised us. 
I was baffled because between the ages from kindergarten to the fourth grade, I did not receive any awards or certificates. Perfect attendance, no merit, no honor, none. And I still have my school records to prove it. We get to the award ceremony and they said, Randy Newman. And they said, the room and the teacher. And I'm like, Ms. Manganello, she said, I told you. She said, you did good in my class. I walked across that stage and got that award and that blew me away. That blew my mother away. Perfect attendance, perfect attendance twice, and then the merit roll. That blew me away. I had never felt, uh, and I'm not saying we going by an energy. It was like somebody was walking me to the stage and walking me off the stage. What am I saying to you this morning? God grace is sufficient for all of you, whether you receive awards or not, man's approval or not, but God's grace is sufficient for all his children. I'm saying to you, even back then, God's hand was on me. God knew the molding, the making, and the shaping of what he had put in me was a gift. And years later, <clears throat> I had a prophetic dream. And I asked God, why was I put in special ed? There's nothing wrong with asking God a question. Just wait for the answer. And when he give you an answer, you'll be okay. You, you, you'll receive the presence of God, the comfort of God. And he took me into a prophetic dream. And I was in a classroom setting with other kids who were special ed, even in our adult years. Everybody had on white robes representing the righteousness of God. And everybody had different color hair and, and different eye, uh, eyewear, not contacts. Everybody's eyes was different. I seen people with light blue hair, with blue eyes, sky blue you know, eyes, green, hazel green, um, gold. And I said, Lord, what is you saying to me? He said, Randy, hear me. He said, all my children are special to me. He said, most of my children have been in special ed, but I seen them with a special gift. Dr. William Seymour from the Great Street of Azusa Revivals. He only had a sixth grade education. He had a, a, a real eye and he had a eye that was a blinded. He could read the Bible with excellence and the power of God would hit him. What are you saying? Sometimes God has to pull you out of the gutters to use you for his glory and show the people, this is what I made. This is my servant. This is my son or daughter. God is not going to put you on the platform and, and slap you off of it. He's going to put you on the platform and he's going to raise you up. What am I saying again? God's grace was sufficient for me even when I was in special ed. Even when people made fun of me and laughed at me. But it's okay. Some of those people didn't walk across the stage. Some of those people are deceased. Some died terrible deaths. People that used to laugh at me, most of them people are in passing. I remember one boy cracked on me so bad, my feelings was just deeply hurt. And he said it real loud in the hallway one day, that old retarded Randy. Sad to say, he's on drugs. You better be careful who you put your mouth on, even when God is in the process of raising you up. God's grace is sufficient for all of us. We all have a story we can tell. We've all been through something. But you don't give up. You keep going. So 2 Corinthians chapter number 12, verse number 9 says it here. And he said unto me, my grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in the infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. That's what Apostle Paul is saying to the Lord Jesus Christ. And if these words are in red, so that's Jesus talking. Jesus' grace is sufficient for all of us. God is not going to take that thorn out your side. He had a thorn in his side to remind him that God is still working on him. That thorn is never going to leave you. 
I still feel the thorn of what people say about me. And, and you know what? I let people talk. Let them talk. Always remember this, and this is not being disrespectful. Negroes will always have something to say. But if you ever go to a man or a woman's house and go into their closet, you're going to find more than just clothes in there. Sometimes you may find skeletons. People, whether you do good or wrong, people are going to always find something to say about you. Mm -hmm. But know that that thorn in your side, God is never going to remove it. Let me read this here, and we're going to close in a few more minutes. It says here, uh, grace is God's presence, favor, power. It is a force, a heavenly strength bestowed upon those who call upon God. Mm -hmm. The grace will descend upon the faithful believer who accepts his weakness and difficulties for the gospel's sake. That's also found in Philippians chapter 4, verse 13. See article Faith and Grace. The greater the weakness and trials of Christ, the more God's grace will give us to accomplish his will. What he bestowed on us is always sufficient for us to our, our lives and daily lives to work for him and to endure the suffering and the thorns in our flesh. I just told you, he's not going to take that thorn out. He's not taking that thorn out of you. Mm -mm. As long as we draw near to Christ, Christ will bestow his heavenly strength and comfort on us. We should glory and see eternal value in our weakness, for they cause the power of Christ to descend on us and dwell within us as we walk through life towards our heavenly home. So while you're on this earth and we're walking towards from this place to the throne of God, that throne is going to be with us. But you, God's going to get the glory out of your life. What am I saying? Special ed is a gift. That was a gift to me. When I left that classroom, in 81, because that's when the other Kamar project shut their doors and we had to move into the Perry projects. I cried a while. When I left that class, I received about five awards. When I went to junior high, I didn't receive any awards from that class. I don't know what her problem was. God bless her. Uh, she was that teacher from Miss Meganella to the other teacher from Performing Arts. I won't say her name. She was a very strict, firm, stern type of person. I didn't hate her. But oftentimes, I didn't like her attitude. And I'm just being real. Uh, the science teacher was more pleasant. Uh, Mr. Lee Pearsons, who was like a dad to me. Uh, he was more understanding. He knew that I was struggling in my emotions. He talked to me one day after school and told me, I know what you're struggling with, son. You don't ever forget the hand that fed you. Neither the hand that brought you over. He was another gem or a gift. Miss Manganello, all the teachers from kindergarten to high school, all of them included, were a gift. Um, even some teacher's aides, like Mrs. Uh, what was her name? Mrs. Conway. She was from school six to performing arts, a teacher's aide. People still talk about her to this day, and she's been gone about 13 years. And my, another memory of Miss Estelle Conway, we miss you. Another teacher that was very understanding, and I was in her class very briefly, uh, she taught Italian language. Uh, Mrs. Jazzy for performing arts. I will never forget her. Uh, Mrs. Barnes was a pretty good teacher as well for performing arts. She was my homeroom teacher. She taught us jazzercise and exercise, and eating healthy. Uh, she loved kids. She was firm, but she loved kids. You know, I can't discredit anybody. She was very firm, but I understood later on why she was that way. And one of my friends made a statement to her. I said, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't. You don't, you don't criticize or crush someone's character. You don't know what her struggle may be. And 
when I attended South Park High School. God's grace was really for me then. I've seen a lot there, and that this is not to do a Randy Newman's bio. Uh, it, the thing with that was, this is the part that got, really got the, the, uh, my emotions in a knot, because <laughs> I'm still laughing at that. Uh, one of the teachers had to leave for uh, several weeks. We had a substitute teacher. I handed in all my classwork, excellent grades, special, still special ed, still people walking past the door and making fun of me, but it was all good and gravy because some of the people never did walk across the stage. You don't make fun of people, handicapped, and you don't call a person by their handicap. You call them by their name. So the teacher added of all our grades, I didn't know this at the particular time, that when a special ed or when a teacher, substitute teacher, grade you, that's not a permanent grading. That's not the actual grade. That didn't know that two years later. Um, I received two awards. That's when I knew something was definitely wrong. And it was, I was becoming more shaken and baffled by what I was hearing. And he said, uh, Mr. Newman, I have a surprise for you today. And, I said, and his name is Mr. Patrick Lewis. He's, he's a fireman and a substitute teacher. He's still a fireman to this day. Thank you, Mr. Lewis, for seeing my potential. Good guy, nice guy. I used to just irritate him, make him laugh. He said, you're funny. He was a good guy, though. Really a good, Mr. Patrick Lewis. God bless him. And um, he said, "You uh, this semester, you earned two honor rolls. You, you, did, did you know that? I said, no, I didn't. I don't keep up with all my grades. Said, he said, no, we added up all your grades for 10 weeks. And you have two honor rolls. One was 90.50, which shocked me. I told you in the beginning, special ed students don't receive those type of awards. And then the other one was 91.75. And we took, I took those awards home. I said, Mom, would you look at this? I mean, we both looked at each other. My mother was living at the time. She said, Randy, I have to say I'm proud of you. She said, I knew it was there. Let me tell you something. Your mother know your weaknesses, your strengths, your capabilities, and your inner abilities. She said, I'm not surprised. She said, I am not. My mother was very proud of me. And that, that made me feel good. She said, I'm not surprised. She said, I figured you would... After all those perfect attendance and merit roles, she said, you did a good job. You did a good job. And she was, mother was very proud of me. And she told me that same year, because certain relatives was dropping out of school. And she told me, she said, Randy George. When she said Randy George, she meant business. That's what she used to say to me. <laughs> she was so funny with that. She said, Randy George, now everybody quit in school. And I'll never forget it. And that's when I had the curls help us for it. Had the Jerry curls, carefree curls, snapback activator, gold activator, and all that stuff. Good stuff. And she said, Randy George, don't quit school. But I had never had it in my mind to quit school. I, was, I wasn't going to do that to her. That would have been a hard task for her to deal with. And she said, don't quit school. And my stepfather was laying on the couch, and he turned over. He said, Randy? I said, yes, sir, because you, you can give your elders their respect. That's when kids used to give their parents deep respect. He said, you gonna, you gonna stay in school? I said, yes, sir. And they both looked at each other and smiled and said, thank you. I said, I never had any plans to quit school. In actuality, I stayed an extra year. People thought I was crazy. Um, I decided to go to BVTC to take up cosmetology. My mother said, go. She was proud of me. You're doing it again, go. And in my senior year, and I stayed, and I went to, and that in my senior year, well, since I was scheduled to graduate with the class of 88, they said, would you rather graduate? The teachers had a meeting with me. My mother wasn't able to make it. Do you prefer to graduate with the class of 88 instead of just going to half a day and just finish the whole day? We got everything set for you. I said, okay, I'll graduate with the class of 88 then. I was happy. That was 31 years ago. I graduated with the class of 88. I finished BVTC. I took up classes still. I had all my points. Back then you had to have 12 points or 15 at the most. I had over 
I still was receiving awards. That was my best year. What am I saying to you? Eight is the representation of new beginnings. God's grace was still with me all up until my fifth year. People, when they go to reunion, they say, we remember you from South Park, but we don't remember you from South Park Prep because I didn't go to Prep. I went to South Park High School and did an extra year. Nobody knew. Nobody knew until years later. So I'm glad I obeyed my parents. Another memory of Mrs. Jackie Bain Muhammad, uh, Newman Muhammad, and Mr. Willie Beard. They influenced me to stay in school. I walked across that stage, she cried. She said, I knew he was gonna do it. When you have children, there are certain children you depend upon. And I think my mother dependency was on me. And now I'm going into pastoring. And that's a whole nother chapter of my life. It was because of those people and my dad too, Minister Randy George Frank Muhammad in memory of him as well. Those people were a great influence. Mrs. Estelle Conway, Mr. Lee Pearson, Mrs. Paula Barnes Shines, Mrs. Sharon, Miss Sharon Meganello, Mr. Uh, Mrs. Dorothea Brock. Um, so many names, so many people. Mrs. Betty P. Wilson, my neighbor. People you will never forget that influenced my life is because of those people I sit here today as a servant of the Most High God. You will never forget those people as long as you live. I walk past performing arts when they get warm. I don't go out there in the winter. And you'll never forget that building. School 6, you'll never forget that. Mr. Europe, Mr. Williams. Uh, God had those people in my life for a purpose. Miss, Miss Cunningham. Um, the gym teachers, Griffin and McLaughlin, they were funny. I liked them. They were a little firm, but I understood that years later why they were that way. Uh, so many influences. So many influences. You, you will never forget where you come from. What am I saying? No matter the thorn in my side, he ain't going to never take that thorn from me, you, or nobody else. God is not going to take that thorn. You can plead with God to take a thorn out your side. He is not going to remove that. That is never going to leave. That's a sign to let you know he's still shaping you. Can you suffer? Can you deal with the suffering? I have dealt with suffering all my life. I'm going through something right now. But because of God's grace and sufficiency, I'm still here. Dorinda Clark Cole did a song, Evangelist and Doctor. Dorinda Clark Cole did a song in 2001. I am still here. By the grace of God. When I heard that song, I wept. I wept fiercely, just began to weep because I understood what she was talking about. I'm so glad I heard those lyrics. Uh, God's grace is for us. We got one more scripture to attend to Philippians 4, I believe it says here, chapter 4, verse 13. And we're going to close. It says here, a familiar scripture, the Philippians' gifts. They had gifts, but they also had Judaizer evangelizing the church to distort the faith. Know your history. It says here, Philippians chapter 4, verse 13 says, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. And it says here, Christ, Christ's power and grace rest upon the believers to enable them to do all that he has asked them to do. God has empowered us to do his work. And you must do his work with character. Now, this is one thing as I close. This goes beyond speaking in tongues. Mm -hmm. God's grace is sufficient for all of us, even in your hardships. God expects you to do a great job. He called you. He chose you out of your mother's womb. Sanctified you and set you apart for his use. So do what God has called you to do. But know that my, in my bio, my small bio, God grace is sufficient for me too. Still going through some changes and challenges. Still uh, learning. To, I know how to read, but reading a little deeper. Study a little harder. 
Don't let your handicap rule over you. You rule over your handicap. Don't let people call you by your handicap. Let them call you by your name. Mm -hmm. No matter what you've been through, your struggles may be. When God is the head of your life, that handicap does not rule over you. God's power, presence, breath, and life rule over you. Mm -hmm. So we want to stay focused, stay prayerful, stay prayed up, and know that nobody can hurt you. And I even rebuke the spirit of bad words that have been spoken over some of your lives. Verbal, mental, physical abuse. I've been through it. I've been through that. But it's God's grace that has kept me thus this far. So be encouraged, every one of you. I am pastor and prophetic voice, Randy G. Newman. Be blessed, every one of you. Good day.